Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Pablo from DMAR Shoe Repair in Guelph, Ontario. I am a second generation cobbler and on this channel we are going to be doing shoe and boot rebuilds and recrafts and leather good repairs as well. So let's get started with this next uh, restoration job. We have a pair of Allen Edmonds LaSalle, which are like a tanny, cognac -y color. Um, a little background on Allen Edmonds. They are a classic USA made Goodyear welted shoe. Um, there's a lot of Allen Edmonds fans out there. Um, they have quite the following. So essentially, a Goodyear welted shoe um, is very good quality. Um, the Goodyear welt is this leather strip here, which is hand sewn to the shoe. Uh, well, hand sewn by a cobbler, machine stitched usually by um, the manufacturer. Uh, and what that does it is it allows the shoe to be resold many, many times over and over again, because as long as there's no damage to the welt, uh, we can remove the outsole and um, start the recrafting process that way and then restitch um, the welt there on the outside. So with this pair today we are going to re we are going to be rebuilding them with JR leather. For those of you who aren't familiar with JR leather, JR leather is kind of known as the Cadillac of leather soles. Uh, essentially the process with JR leather takes about nine months to 12 months uh, to make them at their factory. Um, they're tanned in oak bark pits. Uh, it's a completely natural process. It's a very old school, old world process. And they're doing it right and they're not taking any shortcuts and that's why it takes, you know, nine months to make these soles versus three months or even 30 days to make your traditional leather soles. So you get a lot more wear um, these are water resistant, um, abrasion resistant. Uh, the fibers of the leather are extremely dense and compact and overall they just smell amazing and um, they're by far the best soles available. Um, and then we're going to do a JR dovetail heel uh, which will be replacing this Allen Edmonds rubber cap. So with that brief introduction let's get this job started. Alright so the first step in a shoe recrafting or rebuilding um, is to take all the old parts that are going to be replaced off the shoe. So we're going to replace, sorry, remove the rubber heel cap, uh, the heel base, we're going to pick the stitches, take the sole off, remove the stitches, take out the cork um, filler, and then we can start to put in all the new materials. All right, so let's get started with the removal process. heel base, which is unfortunately not leather stacked, which is what we want to see. It's more of a fiberboard compressed paper uh, that is nailed onto the shoe from the outside um, and then clinches the leather sole because this is a 360 degree welted shoe, um, so you don't have to clinch the nails through the footbed um, just into the sole because the sole is being held on by the welt and the welt's being held on by the upper and the uh, gemming on the inside which we'll see in a bit. Now in a perfect world your heel base would come off in one clean piece and could be reused again. Not always the case, especially with these fiberboard heel bases, but if we play our cards right, oh, oh, yeah. So that came off in one clean uh, pull. So that's good, it's totally fine, we'll reuse that.
And there's obviously some glue involved in this process when the sole is glued to the welt and the cork filler. So I'm just trying to break some of that glue off so I can get my knife in there for a nice clean cut. And with a Goodyear welted shoe, um, you don't have to super overdo the gluing because they are stitched on as well. So the stitching is what's going to be the main catalyst holding everything together. And in a perfect world, the sole would come off in one clean piece as well, like the heel base just did. But us cobblers don't always get the best luck when we're fixing shoes. You never really know what you're going to see until you take it apart. So at this stage we have everything taken off and this is the cork filler. So that needs to be removed and you're going to have a little bit of a divot uh, or an indent from the side of the shoe all the way around and that's what the cork filler does. It makes everything perfectly level um, otherwise you're going to have a little hole and it's going to be super comfortable. So let's take the cork out now. And if this cork was in perfectly 100% shape, um, you could reuse it. You wouldn't have to remove it and change it. Um, very, very, very seldomly is the cork in 100% shape. But if it is, then you leave it in there um, because it would have been molded by your foot through all the wear you put the shoes through and then you have made your own personal imprint in the leather footbed or insole and then into the cork as well. So there will be a slight break in process on a recrafted pair of shoes because there's new cork which hasn't been imprinted. And also, the new sole hasn't been flexed or worked in either, but that's the fun part with good and new leather shoes. Alan Edmonds usually don't have shanks. Why they don't use shanks, I'm not sure. Um, could be because of a 360 degree welt that most of their shoes come with. 
keeps it a little more stiff, but usually you'd see a shank, uh, metal, um, wood, fiberglass, whatever. So this is the uh, where the cork filler goes. You have your gemming, which is a piece of fabric that's glued to the footbed. And then you have the upper, leather upper, comes around. And that's that layer there. And then this is the welt. And then that's all sewn together. And then that's the outside of the welt, which is where the outsole stitching is done. All right. So let's take apart the other shoe and then we'll go from there. Alright guys, so at this point we have the old cork removed and the last part of the um, breaking apart process would be to remove all the old stitches on the welt. And the reason that's very important is because the welt allows us to resole the shoes a lot easier uh, if the welt's original as opposed to having to remove the welt and then re-welt it. That is a time consuming process. Totally possible, totally fine to do, uh, but it's a lot more time for us and it makes the job uh, pricier. And um, that's one question that I would recommend um, consumers ask their cobblers too, is will they be removing uh, the original stitching on the welt? Because if you don't and you stitch on top of that, I touched on this in my previous video, you are going to do a lot of damage to that welt and it's going to just be a botched job and no one likes a botched job. All right, so let's get these welt stitches out. Okay, so at this point, everything has been uh, deconstructed. Just went through the very tedious job of removing all the welt stitches. Um, and like I said in the previous video, um, you know your cobbler really loves his job when he's willing to take that time to remove every single welt stitch. So from here, we're going to move on to replacing the cork. Um, 
this little cavity here has to be filled with something and most shoemakers will use cork uh, hot cork or spreadable cork or cork sheet doesn't really matter uh, most cobblers will use cork sheet um, so eventually essentially we're just going to fill that little gap um, maybe an eighth to a quarter of an inch um, to make this shoe perfectly level all right so let's get that glued on Alright, so at this point here we have shoes recorked, um, everything's ready for the new materials. JR leather soles are ready to be glued on. So we will glue the soles on and trim them down nice and flush to the welt and go from there. Alright.
All right, so at this point we have our new leather soles uh, glued onto the shoes. Next step is going to be to cut a channel into the sole so our stitches will be buried uh, and they'll last longer. So what I'm going to do is use the old sole as a guide and I'll get the right depth uh, onto the new sole and yeah, we'll go from there. Welcome back. So we have our soles stitched, uh, colored and finished on the bottoms. We have our top lifts also colored and ready to go. So we're going to wrap this up quickly now. Um, I'm going to glue on the heel bases, then the rubber top lifts, sorry, the combo top lifts, leather rubber combo. These are called combos. Uh, we'll sand everything nice and flush around the edge and give them a quick clean and condition and polish and this project will be done. Alright, let's get to it.
All right, so we have glued on our JR dovetail combination heels. We went ahead and we sanded them, um, fine finished the sole edges, and from this stage on, we have to now ink the soles on the edges and all around the heels. Uh, we'll buff that up, um, make those look nice and pretty. And then the only thing left would be to clean, condition, and polish the uppers. So let's uh, move ahead with the ink edging. Alright, so we'll let that uh, die dry for 15-20 minutes, and then we'll buff it up, uh, burnish it with some wax, and uh, finish up the uppers and wrap this project up. All right, so we are getting very, very close to wrapping this job up. Only thing left to do is uh, restore the uppers, and they're not in too bad a shape. Um, there's no wax buildup or anything like that, so there's nothing in terms of stripping them or anything too excessive that needs to be done. So the products that I'm going to use today is Saphir Cleaning Lotion. This is a gentle uh, cleaning wax, which will essentially just clean up anything on the surface, any dirt, um, any old polishes, and just kind of prep the leather for the next part, which would be um, Saphir's Gold Line Renovateur, which is kind of known as the liquid gold of shoe care products. This will really feed the leather, hydrate it, uh, beautify it, luster it up, and then, um, I'm going to finish with a uh, Saphir cream polish from their blue line because I don't have the perfect match in color from their gold line. And just got to be a little careful because there's some light colored stitching around the heel there, uh, around the vamp area and the toe area. So probably this uh, Renovateur will do a really good job in restoring the uppers. So there's not a huge need for them. The pigment to be everywhere but I'll definitely go over a couple spots where it's a little bit lighter. 
Um, and of course I'm going to put in my shoe trees because whenever you're cleaning, conditioning, or polishing your shoes, you want to have shoe trees in them. Uh, helps keep the shape, uh, helps you massage out those little wrinkles that form in the vamp. Uh, so really whenever you're not wearing your shoes, you should always have shoe trees in them. It's very important to long-term maintenance. And then this little toothbrush is one I'm going to use to kind of get into the welt area. Um, you know, that picks up dirt and stuff too. So I want to make sure that I'm getting my cleaner or, or conditioner in there too. Make that look nice and pretty. Alright, let's get started.
All right, so that wraps it up for today's restoration project. Today we worked on a pair of Allen Edmonds LaSalle split toe derbies. We put new JR full leather soles, uh, JR combination leather rubber heels. We did a clean condition and polishing of the uppers. And uh, yeah, they turned out pretty good. Customer is going to get a lot more wear out of these. And uh, with a JR sole, um, they'll get even more longevity out of these than they did originally. With that said, uh, we love working on Allen Edmonds here. They are a great brand. They are a great entry level to Goodyear welted footwear. Made in the US, they've been around forever. They have a very, very solid following. Uh, there's groups on Facebook and so on for enthusiasts of Allen Edmonds. They have a huge line of shoes and offerings. So if you're looking to get into uh, Goodyear welted high quality shoes, Allen Edmonds is a great place to start. So with that said, thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you guys next time for our next restoration project. Take care. Ooh.